<laughs> Look it up. <laughs> Uh, why are you stopped here, Jake? Um, <laughs> end of my, just the end of my leash. Okay. Yeah. Are we on the ship move? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's why I thought you might be seeing something. I was no. Just <laughs> can zoom in on this, you know, sediment. You're, you're too used to the fast-paced nature of this dive, I think. <laughs> I know. One thrill after the other. Hype train doesn't stop for anything. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta find out if that was Grimpa Toothis or not. I'm gonna look it up. That is such a fun name. Grimpa yeah, that's a good one. Like a grumpy toothis. I don't tooth. even know how to spell that. I just saw you butcher it. Uh, <laughs> okay, it's, I wasn't that bad. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was a Grimpa Toothis. I just can pulled you, that out of nowhere, so we don't sentence, need. Please? I've never had to spell any of this stuff. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was totally a Grimpa Toothis. The Grimpa Toothis stole uh, Christmas. A lot of the videos of Grimpa Toothis are by Evie Nautilus. <laughs> but the videos of Grandpa Toothless are <laughs> totally different. Different genre. <laughs> Grandpa Toothless. <laughs> I can't. Actually, there's something from the front row. Uh, the Dumbo? Yeah. No. We're going to be going through a shift change here, so you may hear silence for a few minutes while everybody's getting organized and thank you to our viewer viewers for tuning in tonight we love your questions keep them up for the next shift Hello, Steve. All right, ROV is going to switch over. Thanks for the fun watch, guys. Hello.
ROV, just a heads up, if we fire the uh, dive salvo, I'll just have to reroute one or two, ca one or two monitors with the uh, Argus dash. Sorry, copy that. Steve, are you happy to continue up towards Waypoint 5 or um, in your watch chain should you discuss grand new plans? We have no grand new plans, but can you zoom out so I can see where we are oh, yes, around I the can. whole feature? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Got a ways to go, as they said. Um, so we'll enter the plateau here, kind of between 4 and 5, and just keep on going up on yeah, our same, okay. same course. Awesome. Go ahead and call another move in. Happy midnight, everyone. Happy midnight. <laughs> Good. Yay, we, midnight. We're here. <laughs> uh, hello, viewers. We uh, just had a watch change, as you heard. And we've now got our midnight to 4 a.m. watch. So bring us some energy and questions. Got about 200 more meters of vertical left to go before we do a rock sample. So somewhere around 25, 60 meters. Roger that. No rush. Glass sponge, our old friend Colophagus. Maybe with some uh, associates on there, see a small crustacean, maybe or a brittle star on the stock, or a pair of them. Oh, Go yeah. for zoom. Oh, look oh, at that! Teeny the teeniest squat. little squat lobster <laughs> ever. Oh, that's so cute. Looks like another teeny little white thing down at the bottom there. Where are you looking? Well, you keep going down on the right side of the stock, or maybe that's something behind. Never mind. I think that's just in the center. Oh, okay. Okay. I should get cracking. Go wide. Seeing things already. So what are we looking at here? Mostly, uh, I think it's a mixture of sheet flows and sediment patches. Um, some of the sediment patches have nodules in them. Uh, the nodules are pretty mm -hmm. sparse, though. Oop, fish, fish friend. Hello, fish. Nice rat tail or grenadier fish. Probably in the genus Coryphenoides. So started out with a very fishy dive. <laughs> That's great. I say last time we were on watch here, so we left around, you know, eight hours ago. We were in that zone of all of those big kind of sediment piles and it taken that course. Oh, sample. that's right. That's that was pretty like, weird. Yeah, come back to this. I don't know if anyone's heard murmurings of more advancement of our thoughts around those sediment mounds at all. Yeah, it is uh we we have hypotheses now. I thought we might. <laughs> uh, so we we did find some uh, spoon worms or echiurans associated with these mounds, and uh, it's totally possible that 
um, these mounds may have just been relics of uh, their Echiran inhabitants at one time or another. Uh, Echiarans are worms that live in tubes and then they have a very long uh, proboscis that they, they can send out and basically scrape sediment towards their mouth uh, from good distances away. So that would explain why you have accumulation happening. Um, That's a pile made by a worm's tongue. Yeah. <laughs> Deep sea is crazy. Thank you for translating that. <laughs> <laughs> There's our science communication right there. <laughs> Not sure I understand still. <laughs> so imagine you had a tongue that was like a meter long. A meter, you said? A meter. Roger. Oh my god. Ex extendable up to two meters relative what? to your body Apparently size. that wasn't a huge leap. And, and Kate was sitting across the mess from you. <laughs> <laughs> and you extended your tongue and scraped her plate clean. But then I, but then I like... Like some like fell out of my mouth and like <laughs> <laughs> made a pile, a pile around you. No, but it's sticky. It's sticky. So you would you use you know cilia to like help you know glue together bits of food and bring it back. So, so I stuck. like create like a cache. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the worms you found Makes were sense. huge. Yeah, it must have been pretty big. Um, you never see the body though, so it's like a it's like horror film, uh, where you never see the the bad guy, right? Oh always, yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, is always the, scarier. The, yeah, the evil. You know, it's very Hitchcockian yeah. sort of so suspense they, but building. But did they see the the meter long tongue? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow. Wait, oh, this, this is great, Steve. You want to make a movie with me? <laughs> yeah. Wait. I mean. So, was the tongue actually observed, or is this like a long extinct creature? No, uh, it was observed. It was uh, what? Some great video of it. Yeah. Um, we watched it fully extended, and then started to retract it uh, as we started to move closer, and then kind of disappeared down the hole. Which watch was this on? This was um, during the first half of dinner, or maybe between four and five p.m. local, somewhere around there. Oh my gosh! Wow. No, I've, nobody mentioned this nope. to me. Yeah, yeah nobody. I just feel like they should, oh. should have said something. I feel like I heard someone say like we saw a spoon worm, and I was like, oh cool, a spoon worm. <laughs> no one told me it had a meter long tongue, extendable so like, to two meters, eating off of necessary. Kate's plate. Well, <laughs> that's that's proportionally to the human size. So yeah, but I mean the the worm itself is probably I don't know, tough to tell. You know we. Don't really sample them very often, but you know, maybe ten centimeters, twenty centimeters, maybe. Oh, okay. Wait. How does it make a pile that big then? It just it just sits in the middle of the you know area that it lives and just scrapes all the sediment off the rocks and brings it towards it. It uh -huh. sorts it, and it probably ejects the sediment uh, that it doesn't like to eat and ingests the organic material that it does like to eat. That's incredible. So the actual length of the tongue <laughs> is not as long as a meter. Um, it's a it was approximately a meter. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. I thought, okay. But it's you know it's extendable, so it, it could be longer. Who knows? That's I mean that's a big cool. pile. So yeah. either yeah. that thing has to be really old. I feel old. like just calling it a spoon worm didn't do it justice exactly. Gear and spoon like go -go worm. Go go gadget yeah. of yeah. Worms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are when they're out of sight of the sediment. They're. <laughs> you guys really need to look up spoon worms after your watch. They're some ugly looking worms. There are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the infauna, uh, which is a name we give to the things that live inside the sediment. Um, they're pretty unique types of animals. I mean, we we I don't think we appreciate them as much because we are looking mostly at rocky hard bottom stuff but you know we were off the axis of the ridge just you know a few hundred meters right maybe a kilometer and we saw totally different communities than what we would see on a ridge so you know if you see evidence uh, sometimes these Echurians produce these starburst shaped patterns on the seafloor which makes it really easy to detect their burrows so they'll scrape 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 kind of at every angle 
kind of like a ship trying to find its heading uh, and then mm -hmm. draw the organic nutrients uh, to the center. Go for zoom. Which results in... Uh, oh, that's just a scraped place spot on the rock. Okay, go yeah. on. It results in these kind of unique traces. Um, and sometimes we, you know, if we're looking at seafloor video or something like that, we can, you know, find evidence of life without having to actually see the organism itself. But we also saw tons of fishes. Um, I think more fishes at 3,600 meters than we had seen in most of the other depths of the dive so far. Um, That's incredible and a m number of uh, blind cuskiels. What else? Uh, we saw the bathysaurus right on the bottom. So maybe there's a spoonworm in our push core. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh be. that'd be fun. Could be. But I'm glad we found what was potentially making those burrows because I was losing sleep over it last night. <laughs> the mounds. Well, I was night, definitely mean, thinking like, about it. Four but hours I, ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it, but like, I still slept a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the curse. <laughs> Biologist curse. Yeah. Cause th there was no reason why we should have mounds like that. Kind of. Did you think it was gonna? Yeah, you did say it was gonna probably be biological in some way. Yeah. That was your first theory. I think you know there was. There was very strong support for there being like burrows. Uh, the burrows were associated with some sort of uh, organism that produced kind of a mucousy, um, mucousy material that acted as acted as glue to keep these uh, very silty mounds as something cohesive. Because um, there's no reason why the current should have scoured those away. So there was probably right. some active construction going on over very long periods of time. Oh, that's another question. What would you th what would you guess for periods of time there? Oh, well, that's a very good question. I don't know. Fortunately, like, we collected some data about that. That might be able to tell us the answer. Oh, that would be amazing. Uh, push core. Yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, it, the push core might be able to tell us. You know, I, I doubt that the <laughs> echirens or whatever is making these are uh, laying down very nice. You know, like layers. layers. <laughs> yeah. So. It, you know. They're more like cookie monster eaters. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Not the cleanest. Now I'm just imagining cookie monster <laughs> with a two meter long tongue. Yeah. <laughs> but when you have a meter I'm long sorry. proposis. You know. In reality, he has no tongue. <laughs> and mysteriously no esophagus. <laughs> Which used to really that's, bother me. <laughs> that's the real mystery here. Uh, How does he eat all those cookies? <laughs> I think 90% of the cookie material actually goes outside of the mouth. Where does the rest go, though?
Ashley, did the watches before us take any biological samples? Um, it looks like we have an urchin and an Ooh. acorn worm, as well as a sea star. Acorn worm. Yes, I'm not yeah. quite sure what that is. I don't think it can. It's it was very. It's a very gelatinous worm that's found at these depths. I don't think it came up in very good shape, but we'll see. Uh, they typically don't have very hard or muscular structures that so kind of just turn into a ball of goo. But we'll see what it looks like when it comes up. A type of hemichordate, so kind of relatives of things with... Bridge, no? uh, uh, 100 meters bearing 085. Sword. Like a backbone type structure, but not calcified. I think that's only during their larval, larval stages as well. Our closest relative down here next to the fish. The worms? The acorn worms, yeah. Mm. Huh. So there hasn't been a lot of coral diversity on this dive so far? It, it has not been great. Um, so we're seeing a bunch of these unbranched bamboo corals and some uh, Romula gorgia colonies. Uh, but I believe they came across a high-density cluster of sea pens earlier, too. Oh, cool. Um, also, they had a Dumbo octopus. Uh, I, I know. know. Which isn't a coral, but... But so cool. Is cool. If we had been up here 15 minutes earlier, we would have gotten that glory. 15 minutes ago? Yeah. Yeah, was it like 11.42? 11, 11 well, maybe, maybe, maybe half an hour ago now. Time is flying. Nice. Chrysogorgia octocoral. The genus Romula gorgia. Okay. Go on. Kind of the, one of the first species we typically see. Um large branching species we typically see as we move up from abyssal depths. There's probably some really nice substrate you know, in place here, but for the most part, I'm not I'm thinking that uh, some of this might actually be not so in place, rubbly. Uh, which is probably why we're not seeing a ton of stuff. Although where we are seeing the corals, they seem to be on the larger rocky substrates. Well, we are moving up on top of a ridge and around a, a, a local promontory sticking out of the side of the seamount. So I suspect you know, there's probably some good wraparound current here, which might support these corals in an area where otherwise they wouldn't be seen much. Um, it's tough to make any comparisons between this ridge. So we're diving the you know, west or southwest ridge of this particular seamount, D, uh, whereas an une most of the other sites we've been diving in the north, northeast, northwest, sides of the seamount so this provides us a different perspective um on the yeah seamount plan see if there if there are any current related differences um, related to the prevailing currents down here uh, we might see some differences in the biological community here
Oh yeah, one of these stars. I think right. we collected very Go for zoom. something very similar to this. Obviously a coral predator. It's like it had a okay. meal recently. Go wide. Something maybe in the genus Circeaster. You can see that feature in the sonar, the prow. Oh, yeah. That's great. Got a nicely behaving USBL this morning. Very nicely behaving. Oh, it's gorgeous. Beautiful water clarity. I keep ending up way too far away because the water is so clear. It's crinoid there on the left hand side. Oh, yeah. can kind of zoom, up, zoom? zoom opportunistically as we move through this yeah, area. I'll, totally. I'll give you a shout out if there's anything really specific we want to get a look at. Okay, go on. Bamboo? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Likely unbranched. Let's see. Just keeps going. <laughs> I love it when they do this. <laughs> yeah. This is my favorite thing. <laughs> oh, oh man. I just like, want amazing. them to go on forever. <laughs> it's so much fun. <laughs> A little Brazingid, maybe? Go for zoom? Yeah, I think so. Yep, percentage sea star. Some arms and regrowth. At least three cool. in regrowth, maybe Go four. Wide. I always wonder what would eat those things. Oh, do you think they have a predator? Or do they just, I mean, I guess everything has a predator? Everything must have a predator. I mean, sometimes even when you're hungry. But they're spiky after. and predators themselves, right? They're they're more planktivorous, so uh, eating. They're things. more what? Planktivorous, so oh, eating, okay. eating things out of the plankton. Not uh, true apex predator sort of behavior. Ooh, what do we have yeah. here? Not, not predatory. Go for zoom. Oh, it's a little fish. Oh yeah, I think it actually might be a tiny baby chonacops. Yeah, oh. without the color. Yeah, they're blue, dark. Oh really? Blue, the purple when they're juvenile. Yep. Oh. oh. Yeah, now you can really see. I'm gonna saddle up. And yeah. Put him in there. He has a very chonacops sort of attitude about things. Did you say it was a china cup? Yeah. Cool. Oh, it's so cute. Okay, go ahead. 
I wish we had a chance to get a bit shallower on some of these dives because there are some amazing uh, chonicid fishes it's in that same family but shallower. Incredible colors and um, shapes represented in that group, that family. One of my favorites, John X. That one's like <laughs> flattened but yeah. bulbous at the same time. This is probably an in air, yeah. No, they they're they're lumpy. Find them on the seafloor. Yeah. Oh there, look at that. <laughs> but like this is I feel like this is the face like we all make after like waking up for a twelve AM watch. <laughs> We're looking at like the saddest looking <laughs> <laughs> What fish are you talking about here? Chonax, the uh, shallower relative of Chonicops. Is it real pouty? Oh, it's real pouty. Very pouty. Yeah, okay, <laughs> I can identify. Yeah, they're, uh, they're pretty special. <laughs> Imagine eating all the pies at Thanksgiving dinner and then realizing you made a bad decision. <laughs> <laughs> and then the face you make after that. That's John Cop's face. <laughs> oh, there's another juvenile John Cop's, I think. Go for Zoom. You see it? Oh, oh yeah. Nice spot, Gabby. Yep. Oh. Great use of the coral. Habitat. He's pretty frowny for such a young one. Yeah. Must have lost its sibling. Yeah. Slip a okay. Bit. <laughs> Go ahead. Too sad, Steve. R yeah. <laughs> Can't deal with that reality. Reminds me of a kid's book called The Pout Pout Fish. The Pout. Puff fish? Pout pout fish. Pout pout. Like pout. Yeah. What happens in it? Goes around to all the sea creatures, um, who try and perk it up and uh, you know, get it to be not so pouty. <laughs> uh but it's a pout pout fish. Is this a children's book that's already been written or one that you're writing? Oh uh, yeah. Right. Oh it is a whole series. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Oh, wow. The pout pout fish, the pout pout fish, and the big, big dark. Oh, my gosh. The pout pout fish goes to school. <laughs> the pout pout fish in the mad, mad day. Oh, my gosh. It's like the pout pout fish in the can't sleep blues. There's a Aww. lot of. This has got to be written by an oceanographer, right? Like a marine biologist? It must be. An it ecologist, something? Very cute. If it's not, I feel like it was a missed opportunity. Yeah. But it was, yeah, it was uh, like on the New York Times list of best kids' books. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. yeah I, I think, uh, you know, there are a lot of, I was discussing this with SCF Kim on the last uh, cruise about kind of the content of kids' books these days for ocean-related um, subject matters. And it's actually some really talented authors and illustrators out there. She uh, she shared a list of books that she likes about ocean exploration and uh, things in the ocean. Oh, Halasar maybe? Fish? Go for Zoom. No, I haven't seen many of these, but it's uh, actually, no, Cuskiel. Oh, really? And Just different coloring? Yeah. yeah, you can go in. It's very... Yeah, yeah, I'm going to say Cuskiel. 
Okay. Not a, not a, not Go one ahead. I recognize though. Not one I'd be willing to guess on. But we've had some uh, some of our scientists ashore, fish fish specialists who have been in the chat over the past few hours. So we'll. Uh, we have some really great folks who go back through our video on YouTube and will write us very detailed descriptions of the fish they see. Uh, what are the sizes of the rocks we have? Are they uh, small compartment rocks or big compartment rocks? Um, we have a little bit of both. Uh, forward bio box A um, is probably okay for some rocks, as well as starboard bio box E and B. So. E being a big one and D being a small one? Yes, correct. I think we took D. Uh, we did. Watch. So. Yeah. Uh, F is kind of full. Something flat might fit in there. Um, and we cannot put anything else in C. Bridge, nav. Anything floaty that wants to escape? Um, no, it's just fragile Same and please. crumbly uh, substrate, so we okay. don't want to break it. For 100 gotcha. meters. Thank you. There's so many of these sea stars with just like their legs splayed out. Yeah. yeah. Little stars, crinoids, shrimp on the base of the coral. This is pretty solid stuff. Amalgamated rocks. Looks like it was probably a pile at one point. Just glued together with crust. Punk. Should be leveling out here in a bit. Bit them 
telemetry indicates. Go for Zoom. Ophiocanthid brittle star on a okay, go colony. We'll have to see. Um, let's see where we are now. Twenty six hundred. We probably have about. Three, maybe 400 more meters of vertical left to go before we start seeing kind of the typical explosion of coral diversity. It's somewhere around 22, 2300 meters. Um, if it holds to be the same as the other sites we visited on this cruise. And what's the depth? We're looking for for our next rock sample around 25 60 meters okay so before then yeah Fish. Where? It's upper left. Oh, yeah. Oh, yep. Uh, looks like another, maybe a small grenadier rat tail fish. Yeah. This is some solid stuff. It could some of these cutaways help you give a sense for how thick this crust might be. Probably several centimeters thick. Tens of millions of years of growth. I saw they scooped something last night. Did they scoop something into the forward box? Yeah, they scooped a bunch of sure. uh, nodules. Nodules. Okay. Three scoops worth. Can we zoom in? Yeah, well, on what? This, whatever these are. Okay, go for zoom. Yeah. Okay, they, they look like foraminifera. Okay. They're flexible. I thought they were rigid. Okay. Arborescent foraminifera. Similarly, Related to how the Cenophia fours are for the sediment. These ones are attached to the rock. 
I've been looking for since last cruise. Uh, can we look at this C pen over here? Uh, yes. Yeah, it just took me a while to figure out just where you were looking. Partial zoom okay. or whatever you can do. I think this is related to the one we collected a few dives Broke ago. Zoom? Looks very similar. Not as yellow, but similar. Sea pen. Okay, thanks. Okay, go wide. I'm looking for a particular stylastrid that we saw on one dive on the last cruise and then never saw again. Um, Stylastrids are lace corals. They have a uh, rigid skeleton, um, but they uh, are very, very, very fragile, especially because they're not very common at these depths. But we saw it on the edge of a boulder, kind of on a fr fringing part of the boulder. I think we saw it around 2,600 meters, too. It's pretty deep. There's rocks. <laughs> Almost there. Another 40 meters or so, 50 meters vertical. Not going to be bagging any peaks today, though. Oh. Rats. What's that pink thing on the left there? Is that just a sea cucumber? Yeah. It looks like a sea cucumber. Almost looks like there's something sticking out on it. But it seems to have a tail. Ah, uh, that's what I'm seeing. Yeah. Uh, I think so. those might be tentacles, actually. The head might be towards us. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> It's got a tail on its head, okay. <laughs> it's fine. Nothing makes sense down here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's a worm that's 10 centimeters long that has a meter long <laughs> tongue. <laughs> Let us never forget. Uh. <laughs> I'm using like gross simpl oversimplifications, so. I mean, that's fine. I'd like to run with it because it sounds really dramatic. <laughs> Echiorans, um, I, you can find them in shallow water and scuba diving depths too. There's nothing special about them in the deep sea. I don't know. And now I think you're underselling them. Nothing special. Video Steve, we need you to find some way to do some like time lapse situation. Yeah. Like, like your other bug I, videos. I, I often yes. think about how I much know you're looking at something. I can't see it oh. yet. Just to the left of the boulder here. Oh, oh, this one. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, oh, Eridogorgia. Go for zoom. I think so. It's very deep, but, yep, looks like it. Oh, yeah. There's that spiral. Squat lobster uh, also on it. Probably a chirostylid squat lobster. I would love to do some dives where we just sit in one place the whole time. Hmm. Watch them rain snowfall. <laughs> Watch the spoon worms. Yeah. Build their mounds. So cool. Steve, since we've been seeing a lot of fish, a couple of viewers have asked, um, since these organisms are used to living in near complete darkness, do the lights of Hercules bother them, do we think? Or do we have any idea of how they might kind of receive that light since they're used to the dark? Yeah, I imagine it's probably not, not, um, not really necessary to help them doesn't really necessarily help them, um, but I also don't think it's really too much of a bother for them. They send, tend to swim away, um, 
but at the same time we do notice sometimes the fishes are kind of hovering in the periphery of the light so oh. they may get some benefit out of it huh. uh you know f for far off enough so we often we'll see them either behind hercules or up near argus or something go presume uh, but it's not really <coughs> clear Can't why they would what this is it. on here yeah we, we saw this um just before the watch change as well just a sponge sitting on nothing can we zoom in on the red spec go for it it's probably sitting on an, a, a, a decent sized nodule looks like there's a tina for maybe or anemone red spot this is a ferronematid sponge um, We've been classifying this probably in the genus Polyopagon, which, as Chris was saying on the last expedition, that it's kind of a catch-all group for a lot Go of ahead. things that look like this. So we don't really know. Uh, but this is the second one we've seen associated with these nodule fields or nodule flows. There's a bunch of small mounds also within the nodule field, which suggests that there's a pretty healthy infaunal population. Maybe some more spoonworms, different species perhaps. I love these big boulders of like conglomerated uh, rubble, rubbly rocks. It's starting to get into a bit more uh, abundance in this area. Colonies are bigger. It could just be that we're on kind of the rim of this plateau. Starting to get What's our move bearing? Um, I was gonna keep it at zero eight zero for the next move, but then okay. I'm gonna move to gradually more northeast. Okay, sounds good. Can you give me zero eight zero on Argus? Okay, I just, I have to kind of follow you around a little bit. Or is she gonna be just oh, like is it to just like too small or, of a? Yeah, okay, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. I'll you're just not, pay better attention. Of field of view. So I have been kind of wagging. Okay. Now. Awesome. This is just the first I noticed. I was starting to like wander off somewhere. Bridge now. Video Steve, we have a question of if you know oh. Oh. 100 meters Yikes. 080. Wait a second. <laughs> um, do you know of any people are, who have developed equipment for time-lapse photography on the seafloor. I imagine that would be Sorry, that was zero hard to keep five. clean. But. Um, yeah, I think it's been done. Um, I'm remembering a sequence I've seen. There's Yeah, there was a great blue, there's a, some great like blue planet sequences. Yeah, there's of, yeah. the hermit crabs. There's the um, ice, the oh, yeah. ice fingers. Do you know what I'm talking about? Nope. Okay. What are ice fingers? Yeah, yeah there's, there's pretty much, um, if you can, you know, get a camera in underwater housing, you, uh, you can you can do a time lapse. Um, sure, uh, plenty of people have done it, but uh, the one I was thinking of was a fish building its nest, kind of on the sea floor, uh, and I remember a time lapse of the fish kind of wandering around, moving rocks, moving sediment. So it's definitely been done. Um, Jeez, look at this guy. This is so tall. Oh my gosh. It's probably something you could you could set scuba diving and then leave, come back to. I don't even get to find out how long that <laughs> is because <laughs> I just like ran out of time. <laughs> that is bonkers. Wow. Wow. Unexpected. That is really crazy. There's a lot of cameras on uh, cable observatories. 
that are just sitting there for you know a year at a time kind of thing and yep they it's usually cycle them because they don't want the lights on all the time over a year because it's too much disturbance so they'll cycle the, the lights on and off on an interval does it then take stills or there's video there's stills yeah. there's yeah there's a bunch of different uh, cameras just i'm talking in particular the one i know just on the ocean networks canada and you can go look at them um, but they i know they've compiled some different uh, long-term kind of images of the same spot over a long period of time and they don't get like gunked up oh they do how they do you, do. Yeah. <laughs> how do you keep them clean uh, you go visit them with an ROV and you clean them with a toilet brush. Ah, <laughs> the toilet brush of science. Yeah, T-Boss. <laughs> That's how I clean my cameras. Too. <laughs> <laughs> or oftentimes you just replace them. They can only really last most of them about a year or so. And then you tend to want to go and swap them out with a different Steve, one. remember how you were like talking about the... Y yep. Yeah. <laughs> On the... Uh, Kayla's Observatory out of Newport, uh, Newport, Oregon. Uh, UW's Cable Observatory that runs from Newport, Oregon out to Axial Seamount. Uh, we put some pretty cool uh, HD cameras in front of some growing uh, vents. Cool. Um, so we've got some pretty cool imagery long term over that kind of growing and falling over and things like that. Cool. Kind of neat. Very cool. No, no. Are those um, powered by cable somehow, or are they yeah. just battery powered? No, they're plugged into the network, so... That's very cool. Um, so, for example, Ocean Networks Canada, uh, Port Alberni on Vancouver Island, it's up, uh, it's kind of inland in the island, but there's a big channel that runs <laughs> up from offshore. And so there's a fiber optic cable that's 800 kilometers long, so it runs out the channel off the continental shelf out to Endeavor Ridge where all the big uh, hot fins are and then circles all the way back around in a big loop and then along there they have these nodes which are kind of big underwater junction boxes uh -huh. and power and communications go to 